Today is Tuesday, February 3rd. We're talking tonight with Hack Fisher and Chris from the BitShares Play DAC. Uh, we always start out with an update from the developers and the team. And then we move on to community questions. And if we have anything in the subreddit, the Beyond Bitcoin Show subreddit, we will then go to the questions at the end from there. So if you cannot attend, make sure that you check out our subreddit. That is Beyond Bitcoin Show. And ask your questions there. With that said, would you like to get started? Uh, for the play development, we are currently uh, going with several rounds of dry run. We just uh, started the first dry run last week. So if you want to take a preview of the GUI or Play Wallet, or if you want to uh, test that, uh, maybe if you, ha you are a HS, HS or BTS holder, uh, you might would like to check that you, your balance is right in the Play Wallet. So with that, you can download the dry run uh, wallet from the GitHub, and then we are plan. Uh, we plan to release a dry run every week, a new dry run every week with uh, new uh, back back fixes, and maybe uh, another several features introduced or changed. If everything goes well, we are expecting that the real chain will be launched in the end of March. For the last month, uh, I think uh, most of the marketing guys are focusing on the uh, crowdfunding, which is uh, launched on the DeckX platform. Um, so uh, Chris and the lock is more familiar with this, and the lock is working on researching on the consensus and uh, game types, different game types we can uh, support. Uh, Alex, as always, is leading the web team to develop the web wallet, and uh, maybe later the live wallet. Claire? And now, uh, uh, CPP developer is helping me developing, fix uh, undergoing bugs and uh, developing the protocol. That's the thing undergoing. Yeah. So, what I got so far from this would be that you're planning on launching in March, that you're currently running dry runs, that people can actually check their balance now by downloading the wallet utilizing that to make sure that their play shares are correct and that you have a white wallet in the works. Did I hear that correctly? Yes, that's the plan. Uh, the web wallet, we plan to have it maybe one or two months, maybe one month later after the match, after the real chain launch. We still need uh, more developers now, so we have a roadmap which you can have a look on the GitHub milestones. Uh, they are updating very quickly. Okay, so you guys are updating it and you're looking into it. From there, you said something about working on the protocol. I think you said Alex is working on the protocol. Claire and me are working on the protocol, and Alex, uh, which is also his uh, front name is Bombastic, uh, is working on the web wallet. I've seen that name, um, I believe, on, Sla on the Slack that you guys have. With this dry run, does this include delegates? Yes, sure, delegate is included. And we are using different delegate model from Bishers. We are still very careful to have a um, slightly dilution. I mean, we, we do not want to have done that dilution for sure. And uh, we are considering the voting algorithm too. Since now every share in features 
can boot up to 101 delegate at the same time. We are considering to reduce the delegates that can be voted at, at, at one time. Are you planning on having that expand as the market cap expands, or are you thinking that'll be a constant? Yes, we will have a max capital, uh, which is uh, the maximum is uh, to be. So there would be a maximum that would that would grow as the DAC itself in, grew in market cap. Yes, and the delegate pace will come from the fees or the transaction fee or kind of the fees in play game. Can you tell anybody who's interested in running a delegate what the fees are to start a delegate? Uh, the fees to start the delegate currently in the draw round is very low at the very beginning, but with the uh, growing of the uh, network income, the fees grow accordingly. Now the fees is average of the last uh, two weeks which is uh, very similar to the Bistro X. Can you talk a little bit about what what are the advantages? Uh, you mentioned um, each share not necessarily being able to vote for 101 delegates. I guess I don't understand what, what, uh, what that does exactly. We have several discussions about the current uh, approval voting algorithm, and we think that the current uh, way of voting, uh, when the participation of voters is very low, and if the if one share can vote one hundred one delegates at the same time, it will tend to be more centralized. I mean, or more with less security, since if one a large shareholder can decide a large position of the delegates. I mean, if the participant is less than 10%, for example, and then one shareholder has larger than 10% shareholders, he can vote, he can decide which delegate can be voted in and be voted out. This means that the delegates can be decided by one, one central person, and small shareholders is uh, hard to communication in this pro progress. I mean, if we see, uh, small shareholders, uh, if they want to vote one thing, they need to communicate with each other and come to come into consensus that this delegate should be voted in, but they will need to spend a lot of time or cost in communication with each other. So uh, we think that um, maybe it's better to reduce the numbers of delegates can be voted uh, at the same time, but uh, it is not required to be too small. I mean, maybe 51 is more um, reasonable for us. So uh, what would be the disadvantages of doing it this way? Yes, the uh, disadvantage is, um, is that uh, at the very beginning, the consensus, I mean, operation, since uh, the deck at the very beginning, it, it is, there's a more centralized than the letter. If there's a need uh, operating, it will be more harder since different uh, shareholders, it's more harder to reach consensus if there's hard fork. That's a disadvantage. It, would it be harder to vote bad acting delegates out as well? Uh, I think the bad acting delegates is not a big issue since uh, the DPS uh, consensus algorithm makes sure that uh, they have very little influence on the producing blocks because the only thing they can do is to produce the block or not. So there's 101 delegates. If one of them refuses to produce, others will re replace him to produce the blocks. That's another big issue. If, even if there's a bad acting 
uh, delegate. I think others still can vote him down. I mean, just uh, do not vote him, vote for him. We know that this debate uh, went before the pictures was launched about the algorithm uh, approval voting and the vote down and uh, vote up algorithms, the disadvantages and the disadvantages. I hate to interrupt you, but I just want to make sure that I've got this straight for everybody who's going to be listening after the fact. You guys will not be including downvoting, which was one of the things that we had kicked around for the primary, uh, the BitShares Exchange DAG. And that means basically that people cannot use their stake to vote somebody down. They can only choose to vote them up or hold off from voting altogether. Is that correct? Yes, that's the basic idea we are considering change. And uh, with uh, the first real change get launched, the primary purpose is to make the PRS liquid. And uh, then we can add the protocol operations. I mean, the transaction types, one step by one step. I mean, uh, first with a chain that with uh, best transfer and uh, liquid, and then we added uh, game platform support, and then launch testing the demo game, and then uh, we can have improve the, the, the games. We can, the third party developers can develop uh, games on the chain. So once this is released, you'll be able to have third party developers launching their games on the chain? Yes. Well, that's a big plus. We are, we know it uh, would be a nice scam, uh, very similar to the Charles coin. And uh, we know that um, several other games can be very easy, uh, very easy to migrate to our platform, especially for the uh, maybe later others could uh, de uh, develop games similar to Lottery or Bingo or other games. But the game types is not uh, limited to this kind of things. We have a uh, brainstorm. We think that the game types could be there. Could there could be to, uh, a lot of game types not limited to gaming. For example, people can just like guessing the real real data guessing kind of games. Third parties may have more uh, imagination. Ability than us. They will they will develop the games that, that they can wondering or we we, we we cannot imagine. Could you say that last part? You cut out. I mean, the third parties have more ability uh, to than us to develop games that we cannot ever imagine. Maybe the the game types we are now considering is only one small part. Of, of all the types. So you think that those are going to be the, the initial driver for this uh, this deck? Yes, the demo game is, uh, its purpose is to teach other third parties how to develop games on our platform, just uh, maybe as a tutorial and uh, teach them how this could be work. Awesome. Well, before I, I move forward, does anybody have any questions regarding that stuff? Feel free to speak up or ask them in the chat box, and I will make sure to voice them for you. Chris, I think it's the first time he joined this account. Maybe you, it's a good time for him to introduce himself. Sure, absolutely. I joined the um, BitShares Play about uh, three months ago. My name is Chris, I'm Swedish, and I arrived here in China about three years ago. And since I've been, um, for the last year or one, one and a half years, I've been uh, extremely interested in crypto. So when I saw um, my chance to join Saved, which is the Chinese office here, and um, BitShares Play, I, I definitely took the chance. My um, background is in economics. I studied in Sweden and took my master there, and since then I've studied Chinese. Uh, and what I currently do for, for Play and for the other businesses here in China is generally marketing and communication in general to the West. 
Awesome. So you're going to be doing a lot of work then probably with us and with the marketing team and individuals who come over to help out whenever they do so. It's good to have you around, Chris. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. You too. And I'm very much looking forward to it. It's going to be extremely interesting, especially in this uh, <laughs> in this industry where uh, I think we're going to have a lot of uh, interesting things popping up and happening, and, and it's not going to be a very dull place to work. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Yeah, we live in, in the times of... Um, there's definitely... I think disruptive might be an understatement, but... <laughs> What's cool for me is that our generation, especially those who have grown up with video games, are very familiar with adapting to new economies, new people, new experiences at the drop of a hat. So I think that it all comes together into a place where the dynamic socially is that our generations will be able to adapt quickly enough to deal with the disruption. But we have to make sure that people are not afraid of the disruption and that we can prove that we can do it in such a way that it doesn't destroy everything that they've built. So it's going to be very yeah, interesting. Absolutely. It's going to be very interesting. It's good to meet you. I apologize for not introducing you earlier. I, I sometimes just go with the assumption that people who come in here, unless they talk, uh, they are, or tell me otherwise, that they are, are fly on the wall type of people. They are kind of the wallflowers. Um, because I myself actually tend to be a wallflower. But with that said, uh, I'm glad that you spoke up. I'm glad that no Fisher worries. introduced no you. And uh, it's good to see Wog Sings here as well. With that said, I noticed that there are a couple questions. Crypto Prometheus had a question, and it looked like Data Security had a question. I'm going to pass. Mine went away. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, Data Security Node asks, how do we become a delegate? It, it, it's very similar the delegating features, you register an account, that is delegate account, and then set up a, a VPS and set up a, a node that is running the delegating client and get the votes from others. I remember you said, it was a while back, we were talking about delegates and they provide, in general, right, we have BitShares PTS, which, which was the vanilla DAC, and it still exists kind of as that vanilla DAC where delegates, all they do is sign blocks with these transactions. Now, there's no extra functionality added to that DAC. It's simply a transaction-based DAC. Then BitShares came along, and they wanted to be a decentralized exchange primarily. Of course, they, they added vote and .p2p, which will make them... Will give them other functionalities as well and probably more resiliency in some ways. Uh, it'll also make it more difficult in some ways, right? But the functionality that the delegates provide there on top of the block production and the block, si well, the block signing rather, is the price feeds. So, in the vein of what data security was talking about, about starting up a delegate, are there any special functions? That these delegates provide on top of the vanilla transactional function. Uh, yes, the security asked asked a question. How do we fund the account to register? This is um, we have a faucet plan, which there will be a link uh, on the in the wallet, which is based uh, based on the idea of pro person, which is. The support from uh, very similar to Bisher's footage, and the PRS is coming from the river, uh, the reserve funds. The second question is: uh, Can can I send PTS to my play account to register? The answer is that if you have a PTS before the Bisher snapshot, you can. Claim your PRS by import your pictures, the exported JSON file, but uh, you cannot send PTS to the play account since they are different deck and then now they are not cross chain supporting this. 
So uh, for now, the answer for the second question is no. But you can claim your play pleasure by imp importing your pictures wallet, maybe. If you don't mind, I'll, I'll go back to, to the first question that we covered before this. Will the delegates be providing any special functionality or play over and above that of what, for instance, the vanilla chain that is BT, uh, PTS provides? And if you don't understand, please feel free to let me know. Uh, yes, you are talking the uh, different delegate model from PTS or... Sorry, I didn't get the idea. Sure. BTS. BitShares, the main DAC, the first flagship DAC, has delegates not only process the transactions, but they also have price feeds that enable them to help keep the peg tracked in the, exchange, the decentralized exchange. So my question is, if you look at BitShares PTS, which is the first chain, and now it's turned into Depos, it doesn't provide any of that extra functionality. It's just a vanilla chain, actually a very good place to just learn about, I think, delegated proof of stake, uh, how to run a delegate, how to maybe uh, clone a, a depost chain and stuff like that on a basic level. What extra functionalities, if any, will a uh, play shares delegate have to provide? They will not be pro providing price feeds, right? They'll probably be doing something else. Uh, yes, uh, actually, in play, they they will play more important roles rather than just uh, sign blocks or connecting transactions. These advanced features might be not included in the first uh, version of Wallet, but they are only way to support several game types. For example, the game needed to interact with other systems or to needed to interact with the real world. We need a similar feature or similar function with the price feature, but it is different. I think it's more um, similar to smart articles, the ideas introduced from Codius, uh, from RippleLab. Um, the idea is that uh, this is only one sample I can imagine. For example, 51% of the delegates are generating the same output. We think that output is valid. And uh, uh, Vitalik from Ethereum give another algorithm that is uh, considering more about the economic concerns, that is the five percentage in the middle of the delegate outputs will be considered in the uh, as a valid output, and uh, those who generated the final output will be get the rewards from the delegate pass or from the the block rewards. So this is something different from price feed, since price feed is to give a similar kind of interacting with uh, the centralized exchanges too, but uh, it is uh, retrieving the middle price fees from all these direct uh, updated uh, price fees. With that said, smart or oracles are, as I understand them, a little bit more of a centralizing factor, is that correct? It, it is more similar to much signature, I think. But uh, with smart oracles, you can execute more complicated uh, logic things there. Uh, you can imagine several servers running and uh, operated by different people, but uh, the final uh, output will be generated by most of these servers approved. So all these servers are running the same logic, but there is possibility that they give different outputs. They, if most of the servers give the same output, then this output is uh, uh, valid. This is kind of a way for the decentralized stack interacting with traditional centralized uh, world or centralized systems, I think. 
Do you see a, a time when this will change or I, I guess the reason I'm saying this is because ByteMaster has stated that the price feeds at present are more like training wheels as he sees them. And as the market grows and becomes rises out of its infancy, that the price feeds will most likely no longer be needed later on. Do you see that kind of playing out for play as well as with respect to this Oracle function? I have different opinions, I think. I think the price feed is important in features. The fees are kind of signal for the packing between the US dollar and the US dollar. The US dollar in the exchanges or in the outside world of the deck. Without this kind of signal, I think the brain of the deck will lose their interacting or just like a body, a person, he lose his hand, he lose his uh, feet or his feel uh, with outside work. He's, even with only his brain, he cannot make the right decisions about what, what should be going on. So you're saying that it's that you believe that the price feeds will most likely always be necessary. Yes, I think it's uh, necessary. I'm assuming that you believe that the smart oracle functions provided by the delegates will most likely always be required as well. All those um, games that is on game and they do not need to interact with the real world. I mean, the users itself. The guys who produce these transactions, this is the way they're interacting with the real world. But for those who need to communicate with each other, for those who need kind of reaching the consensus, for example, the packing in the, uh, in the pictures, I think it is not enough with the honor with the transactions from the users. Gotcha. I appreciate you giving us a little bit more explanation. Whereas it is delegated proof of stake, you're showing us that what what I've been thinking, uh, but it's been difficult to kind of see what would come, right? Uh, but that delegated proof of stake will have many iterations, and there will be many people who will come out with different quote-unquote DACs or decentralized autonomous corporations or companies, however you want to call it, that will provide specialized functions and may require the addition of maybe different protocols in their protocol stack to provide the services that they're wanting to provide. It'll be very interesting to see where we go with this. Uh, does anybody have any questions regarding what Hack and I have just talked about? And Chris, please feel free to Put, to give input wherever you want to, my friend. You're you're here for that reason as well, right? So don't be shy. Yeah, Chris, I think maybe you can give a, a simple update, uh, crowdfunding things and the dependence. I mean, uh, if Fatty and uh, all other guys, uh, if we want to have plans for play, for marketing or other ideas, you can just contact uh, Chris. Uh, he we are helping communication, and uh, we then we would know that what kind of support uh, we can give or deliver. Sounds good. Ryan Danny asked, "What is the recommended pay rate for play?" And since Chris is offline, I think due to connection issues, if we could just answer that question, and maybe we can get to Chris if he if he gets everything fixed, and if not, we can return to him next week. Uh, yes, uh, the recommended pay rate for the first, I mean, uh, the pay rate cannot grow, can only be reduced. The pay rate at the first, when, when the chain get launched, it could be 100 percentage at the most. That is good for the deck since reward or the network income may be slow at the first, but there's competition between the, these delegates. When the income grows, the delegates could choose to reduce their pay rate. Since if that way they can get
gather more votes from others. So it's it's a very similar dynamic here where those who choose the lowest pay rate are more likely to get into the delegate positions than those who pay who choose high pay rates. However, they're going to have to deal with potentially losing money running these delegates if they choose too low of a pay rate. Yeah, it's uh, very similar to the human resourcing uh, market. Uh, if there's too many delegates, maybe it's a good idea for you to reduce your pay rate, but maybe if, maybe it's not because uh, the advantage for you to compete with each other uh, with others is not the pay rate. Maybe the it's the value you're providing. Sure, sure. Before I ask my other questions, do you guys have any questions? Would you like to ask Chris or Hack Fisher or Log Singh anything? Okay. One question that I had, Data Security Node asks, well, says, states it's roughly 60k BTS to be a 100% delegate. Is it the same for play in notes? Oh, okay. This is, this is a slight mis... Uh, understanding data and this is something that we'll, we can cover a little bit just because it was brought up there are multiple BitShares DACs and this is probably a good time to explain this it started out with BitShares X being just the exchange there was going to be vote there was going to be .p2p which was the DNS DAC and it was going to provide the DNS functionality domain name services functionality um, in a decentralized means. And then we had play, which is for gaming, and music, which is for, mu oh, well, obviously, for music. And the tokens in music are notes. BitShares Play has PLS. And BitShares decided that they were interested in trying to bring a higher level of voting functionality into BitShares X DAC for the community and for numerous other reasons. And they also wanted to have the decentralized P2P services offered through that. So they kind of, I would say, gobbled them up, but DNS as a separate chain still exists. And PTS as a delegated proof of stake chain still exists. I hope that answers your question. Go ahead, Hack. Uh, yes, uh, in BTS, why it is roughly 40,000 BTS to be a 100% delegate? Because in BTS, now the delegate pay is about 50 BTS uh, per block. Uh, it is calculated based on the average of the last two weeks. So if the reward go up, the reduced uh, the direct account registration fee will go up too. Uh, this is why it is so high now in picture, pictures. Uh, uh, but in play, uh, it is using the similar formula, but the network income will be very low in the very beginning. So it is might be a good idea idea to register it earlier. Do you see a lot of people who seem to be very interested in this? Yeah, I can expect in that a lot of people could be interested in this since they already have a very good uh, delegate user base from pictures. They have a smooth, more smooth learning curve now. So you feel like as the learning curve decreases for these people because they've already learned on other chains, that this is going to continue and that there will be more people who are delegates on one chain or who learned to become a delegate on one chain, basically moving to other chains to find a, a delegate uh, position. Um, yes, I think so. I heard somewhere in, I believe it was from Riverhead, that we have approximately 6,000 uh, potential delegates for BTS at present. Have you guys received a large influx of inquiries regarding the delegates 
positions and how to go about getting the wallet together and getting it all set up? Uh, about what? About how to become a director of play or? Do you seem to have a lot of interest that's actually coming to you, or is this, or or is the interest kind of something that you assume is going to come? I think the data of the pictures. I mean, you you told that uh, it is about thousands of delegates holding uh, as the candidate, candidate. I think that might not be the real data, since pictures make all the Quixote names or other names as default delegate. They are they are delegate, but they might not active there. A lot of people are not, uh, those, uh, a large proportion of delegates are not uh, really setting up uh, notes, preparing for producing blocks. Uh, so yes, so I think there's interest, but uh, I have no idea how could this interest uh, be? How large could this interest be? Yeah, and that's kind of where where I'm trying to get a little bit of a wrap around this or, or a grasp around this because i'm trying to find essentially what the market depth is for potential employment by the blockchain for these delegates uh, it's going to be interesting to see it and i i actually believe that as we see more and more people wanting to become delegates that we're going to see a demand for new dax coming out in the future uh, it's going to be very interesting to watch but Thank you for, for that. I wanted to ask you guys a question you were talking about, and we can get ex get to that, actually, what Dave is talking about right now. But Monsterer from BitShares is providing a gateway called the Meta Exchange. Now, you said that there wasn't going to be cross-chain trading, but is it possible to use these gateways to essentially do something like what shapeshift is doing with your pls into into bitusd uh this kind of gateways uh several people or account uh setting up uh, a kind of communication or trading easily for just to uh, use uh maybe a robot behind this kind of trading uh, it's centralized too, and I think it's a good, good approach or good way for the uh, liquid shares before there's uh, cross-chain trading coming up. So yeah, um, th this could be one of the way, but I think it is still centralized. So you believe that these services will have their place, but that a large part of the market share will someday be essentially taken out uh, when we end up having something like cross-chain trading. Yes, I think the advantage of these gateways is that they could be very easy to use and they could uh, keep anonymous and they need you to trust these gateways. Uh, they introduce trust, but they have the advantage of keeping anonymous against uh, other exchanges like BTC Red or other exchanges. It's going to be very interesting to see where the people who try to get us to live in fear of terrorism around every bend <laughs> are going to allow that or not, or try to stop it. But I guess depending on the jurisdiction where you are, you you get to make your own decisions on that. And we all are free people, and depending on how many people decide to go a certain way, we'll figure out whether uh, it ends up with anonymity on top or if it's murdered by the the incumbents. But it'll be very interesting. With that said, data security node asks if there is a place to buy PLS. And that's a good question. Are, are there going to be exchanges that you're aware of at present that are going to allow people to buy and sell PLS? Uh, yes, sure. As far as we know, the current exchanges 
trading business will be trading in pairs too. They already taken the snapshot, I mean the snapshot on exchanges for play. So we can expect that they were trading pairs and you, you can, people can buy pairs from that. And to, and to extend his question, uh, with bit shares, you have different bit assets that are also traded on these exchanges. Are game coins going to be looked at in the same light as bit assets with respect to these exchanges? Do you know? Mm, I have no idea. This depends on the decisions of the exchanges. Uh, if they are going to do uh, like trading coins in their exchange, I'm okay with that. Uh, this is uh, the behavior or decision of them. Gotcha. So you haven't heard any news directly with respect to that to say that there are exchanges that are going to be doing anything with the game coins? So far, I haven't heard of, but uh, certainly there will be tra they, they were trading P PRS. Uh, for game coins, maybe because due to the trading model of, of the play. So it will be maybe always uh, easier to buy in play deck rather than in traditional exchanges. But who knows, maybe there's uh, one position or one place for the exchanges to trade in them. And the only reason I ask that is because it seems to me like if, for instance, say Activision Blizzard, that was one of my my big games well, pretty much all the games that I really grew up loving, of those, most of them came from Activision Blizzard. And I believe that it might be valuable to see something like if Activision Blizzard had game tokens, that would almost be like the equivalency of bid assets for them and their digital world. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see where that goes. But I think seeing those game coins on these exchanges might provide a lot of extra liquidity to them and might help to bring more games into play shares. Just a couple of thoughts. And to answer data security node, BTER will be carrying PLS as well, to my knowledge. Can you verify that, Heck? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, I think uh, they will carry PLS. Certainly, and uh, I think currently there's three or four exchanges in China. Another one is the Yunbi. The Yunbi? Y -Y -Y N is in November, B is in Bravo, I is in Indigo? Uh, yes, the Yunbi in Chinese, it is uh, the pin of the Chinese characters. It is uh, mean the card, card coin. Sounds good. Now, we have a few minutes left, and I kind of wanted to wait until last just to kind of end it with a bang here. You guys over on PlayShares Talk were talking about the number of coins of Bitcoin that you received for your crowdfunding, uh, IPO, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what you want to call it. But you did essentially kickstart your campaign by selling off a percentage of your shares. What was it, 20% of the PLS? Uh, yes. yes. Those are for Bitcoin. Can you give everybody the information on this? Uh, yes. Actually, the DECX is helping us for this crowdfunding, and uh, this will be used to cover the costs for the next uh, one or two years. The final targeting, uh, the details is introduced in the DECX page. Uh, I would like to say it is the final coins we're collecting is uh, about 2,300 more. So that's the result. That's the uh, basic information and it just ended uh, yesterday. I, we, we think that it is good performance uh, for us since it means that more and more people are uh, agree on the consensus of the vision of the play 
And uh, another purpose for crowdfunding is that uh, we would like to, another function is marketing. We would like to have more people know the idea so play. So I'm doing the calculations here, and at, and at the current Bitcoin price, you're looking at over five hundred thousand dollars, or let's say BitUSD, <laughs> right? In funding at present, are you keeping them all as Bitcoin, or are you turning any of them into other cryptocurrencies or fiat to keep the value at a certain place? Uh, where where are you on that? We. Uh, for to avoid the volatility of Bitcoin, especially in the second week or third week, the Bitcoin price dropped quickly. So, uh, Lock have a communication with the firm members and uh, post uh, notification that. So we move uh, most of the uh, Bitcoins from uh, to in Bit BitCNY and uh, several in BitUS dollar. And uh, we also keep several Bitcoins too. That's uh, basically the proportion, yes. Can you give us any numbers on how much is in BitUSD, BitCNY, and Bitcoin? Uh, it's uh, basically about less than 3 million BitCNY. 0 0.5 million BitUS dollar. 0 0.5, you say? So five. I'm try I'm just trying to understand this. Uh, as far as the bit USD, how many do you have in bit USD right now? I mean, how many bit USD do you guys have right now? Yes, Lock just answering that. That should be the exact number. Roger. Okay, so I'll read this off for the listeners. That is three hundred thousand bit CNY, ten thousand bit USD, and that leaves you with how many Bitcoin left? Lock, do you know that? So 100 BTC left and some other CNY. Well, it sounds like you guys did very well. It was a, a very difficult time that we went through with Bitcoin going down like it did. And we still have no assurances that it's going to go back up anytime soon. And with other competing technologies that provide a lot less um, volatility, we might not see it go back up. So... You know, you have to kind of make your own decisions, I guess. And of course, yeah, data security is saying that people are saying, well, that he says 300 plus next month. We'll see. We don't know, really. I mean, this market's very small. Sorry, what's the meaning of 600 plus next month? The price of Bitcoin. That's what he's thinking. He's think okay. If you got a crystal ball, buddy, let me know. I'll say that. But with that said, um, Congratulations, guys, on everything that you're doing. We're going to continue having these hangouts at 9 p.m. Eastern. Are there any websites that you'd like to direct any of the listeners to before we log out for the week or for the biweekly hangout? Yes, I'm saying that Chris might be careful with this. I mean, there's several websites, maybe, and social media accounts that we can have. Um, go ahead and type them in, and I'll go ahead and, and I'll read them off, Chris. The first one is dacx.com forward slash play. The second one is playtalk.org, which is the official forums. The Twitter account for this is official dacx. So make sure to follow the Twitter account official dacx and get your latest updates from them and retweet their updates that they provide. Anything else? Okay. Well, thank you, Chris, for coming on. Thank you, Log Singh, for answering our questions and hack course. Thank you for coming on and, and leading this discussion as the developer of BitShares Play. And we look forward to continuing to have these hangouts. This is just a reminder to those out there listening. Anyone is able to attend these Hangouts, just feel free to check with the playtalk.org website where we will post under the Beyond Bitcoin sub-forums the times and dates of our future Hangouts. Also make sure to follow 
at beyond underscore Bitcoin on Twitter and retweet all of our hangouts. So with that said, thank you everybody for attending and we'll see you soon.